A second major approach, although it was not uh, hoped to be a major factor by the founders, hoped that uh, elections would be nonpartisan, uh, is that, however, competition between parties in elections. The founders hoped that competition would be among individuals rather than parties. But it soon happened that uh, voters organized themselves into parties, and parties became dominant in, uh, in elections. With the advent of parties, attempts began to emerge to restrict campaign expenditures and to restrict donations to campaigns. These efforts have generally not worked. Uh, they continue to be attempted, but uh, it is apparent to most who have investigated the matter that they mainly serve to protect incumbents against challengers. So as a campaign protection measure, you have, they've, been, they've been successful, but as a way to reduce the influence of big money, they have not been successful. Another approach has been uh, term limits. It's thought by limiting the number of terms that an official can serve that uh, it will reduce the, it will re reset the competition periodically so that new people keep having to build their political bases and thereby limit the uh, influence of special interests on them. Another method that's used, for example, in uh, the military and in some other large governmental organizations is frequent reassignments. In the military, uh, personnel are reassigned periodically to prevent them from engaging into what is called empire building. Another, another method that has been attempted is life tenure. In the, the Constitution provides that this be done for uh, federal judges who serve life appointments subject only to good behavior. Finally, the method which is also found in the Constitution is sortition. Uh, it's, the word sortition is not used in the Constitution, but uh, juries and grand, trial juries and grand juries are supposed to be selected at random, which is what sortition means, as a way to avoid undue influence on the way they make decisions. Now let's examine each one of these. Separation of powers depends on all parts not falling under the control of the same hands or a single party or faction. Uh, this might have worked if people had not organized into parties and if the special interests had not tried to exercise undue influence on both or all of the several parties. But that hasn't worked out that way. Competing parties depends on both major parties if it's the system is set up to favor a two-party system, not falling under the in undue influence of the same interests. But in fact, we've seen that although some interests favor one of two parties more than another, that many of those interests actually uh, exercise the same influence on both major parties. Restricting expenditures can't prevent expenditures by outside interests to influence elections or other public decisions. 
Uh, we've seen the recent decision so by the Supreme Court in Citizens United, which removed the authority to restrict expenditures by large corp by corporations. Uh, the Supreme Court relied on the First Amendment, which states that Congress shall make no law infringing on the freedom of speech or the press. It made no exceptions for corporations. So, as a result, it makes no difference whether a corporation or an individual spends money as long as he does it in a way that's not coordinated with an election campaign. And in fact, it opens the possibility that uh, candidates may rely on outside organizations to support their campaigns and not even seek donations for their own campaign at all. Uh, they can essentially uh, outsource all of the campaign as long as they don't control or too closely coordinate with the outside uh, campaigns. Restrictions to, on donations have the same problem. You can't prevent outsiders from unduly influencing elections or the public decisions. As long as money can influence, it will. You, we need ways that are not susceptible to money. Term limits don't work because the real power is exercised by the stats. And it can take many terms before uh, an elected official learns enough and makes the connections to exercise power on his own behalf. Until he can do that, which can take decades, uh, the staffs are in control and uh, he won't be able to get anything done unless he appoints staffers who are more likely than not, not really working for him, probably working for outside parties. Frequent reassignments only work for jobs and workers that are interchangeable from one location to another. Um, it can work in the military because military personnel are considered uh, more or less like interchangeable parts. But it's in fields where the skills are rare and the jobs require such highly specialized skills, uh, frequent reassignments really doesn't work as an alternative. Well, life tenure has been tried, but if you make a bad choice in an appointment, let's say of a judge, all it does is entrench the bad choice. So uh, there are problems with that as well. Sortition is the only way that has been found to work to reduce undue influence, but it presents a problem of how to ensure adequate skills. If the job to be done requires very advanced skills, then choosing at random from the general population is probably not going to uh, provide the skills that are needed. But as soon as you try to adopt screening methods for screening out low-skilled people, you begin to run the risk that special interests can unduly influence the pools that will emerge of skilled workers. If uh, it's possible to unduly influence everyone who has a, the skill that's needed, then selecting the workers from those that have the skills at random 
won't necessarily help. 